out to the uh, Outsound uh, YouTube channel's program in the field. Happy to be here, and, I must say. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're talking uh, with Bill Walter uh, from Inner Ear Brigade, who is going to be performing at the Outsound Music Summit on uh, the uh, uh, 29th of July at the Community Music Center. So uh, tell me, uh, Bill, uh, what, uh, what is it that uh, brought you into music to begin with? Wow. <laughs> that's a that's an excellent question, I have to say. Um, everyone has like a little story or maybe like a little revelatory moment. Mm -hmm. And mine was, um, I saw a video of John Coltrane. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget what video it was, but it's like a black and white video. He and Elvin Jones went off for about 10 minutes on the Intune Impressions. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was transported to some other place. And just seeing that inspired me so much musically. Mm -hmm. But before that, I had you know, piano lessons, guitar lessons. I was into metal, mm -hmm. metal music. But seeing John Coltrane did something to me mm -hmm. and um, put me on a path of kind of creative experimental music or just new music, classical new music, experimental music has mm -hmm. really been inspiring to me. And it, I guess John Coltrane kind of like tapped into something inside me and uh, inspired me so much that... Um, the, the question was, what put me on a musical path? I think it was John yeah. Coltrane, they, originally. Right. Yeah. Right. And how old were you then? It's probably like 17. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, and also a very influential, because uh, I grew up in Chicago. Mm. So I kind of started on blues guitar as well. Mm. And uh, and I and there was this, a friend of mine, a drummer, a, kind of more of a mentor, I didn't really realize at the time, we just like played. We just, oh, let's just improvise. So it was about improvised, but it was kind of in a blues context. And then we kind of took it out into like kind of like more experimental, like rock improvisation. So just having that experience to play music, just improvise, was really formative as well to kind of explore things. You, you, were you just improvising out of the blue? No, it was, like, uh, it was kind of like a blues context. So my, my right. nickname used to be Billy Ray. Like a, after Stevie Ray Vaughan, because I really like Stevie Ray Vaughan. He was my right. idol. Right. Just saw Stevie Ray Vaughan at the last concert right. at Alpine Valley in Wisconsin. But um, huh. but he was a big influence of me. And they called me Billy Ray. Uh. So that was <laughs> that's <laughs> it. Oh man, oh, it's dirt telling, on me now. Now you're telling everyone your your nickname is Billy Ray. No, no, no. It's actually Buddy Ray now. You call me oh, Buddy, it's Ray. Buddy Ray, or you call me Buddy Jim. <laughs> Buddy Jim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you, okay. The monikers. Yeah. I yeah, guess it depends kind of on joke. the region you're in. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, so yeah, just like being inspired by improvisation and uh, uh -huh. and John Coltrane, and it, when I was like younger, and yeah. then kind of being more exposed to uh -huh. more like classical music and stuff like that. I, so. I assume like the, that that moment and other moments have op opened you up to exploring also uh, other styles of music, and you know, uh, you know, when I grew up, it was the library, but I'm always curious to find out like what other people oh how they found out about oh, man. Know, more music and what their research was. What Lots of like. Because I, I'm also I also teach audio and music uh, at the college level now, and so a lot of college instructors really inspired me. Mm -hmm. um, I went to University of New Mexico, and there's, there's a few individuals there. Um, Christopher Schultes, who's kind of a K, John Cage expert, exposed me to like Carl Heinz Stockhausen, Ioannis Zanakis, mm -hmm. um, John Cage. I was way into John Cage. Um, so Chris Schultes kind of like pushed me into that direction, just kind of more experimental classical music. Right. Uh, yeah, and so that just being exposed to that stuff, and then just kind of being like, "Wow, this is really amazing stuff." Yeah, um, kind of is a big influence on me. Just like kind of the experimental stuff, I have to say. So I know you 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 write for Inner Ear Brigade, right? Yeah. So when when was it that uh, that writing came into your into your realm? Because I know you were improvising as, in, at a young age, and you obviously you, you went to school or college in New Mexico. Yeah. So, were you also composing then, or did you start that? Oh, yeah. Later? I was always composing. Oh, another big influence was, like, John Zorn. Hmm. Um, so, just kind of, like, uh, cutting up lots of different styles of music, little snippets of this music. So, I wrote a lot of compositions in my undergrad of, like, kind of taking different genres and mixing them together. I've always liked working directly with musicians. Like, the whole cons composer thing is, like, oh, I'm going to write this, and some, some other musician is going to play it. I always like working directly with musicians and kind of getting their personality and, and everyone working together. I really like that. Uh, the, that example, but yeah, lots of different influences. But in terms of writing music, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of interesting because I, I I really enjoy playing music. Playing music is just like so fun. Writing music is kind of not so. It's I say it's not fun, but it's it's hard work. Right. It's like takes a lot of focus. Whereas like 
playing music is more of a release. Right. But um, so yeah, lots of John Zorn in there. A lot, a lot of experimental, a lot of jazz. I went through a jazz Nazi phase where I was like, jazz is the only real music, and everything else sucks, <laughs> you know. But then I got out of that. And more recently, actually, after I went through all the classical and the, the John Coltrane stuff, I've gotten more into rock music, believe it or not, because I never really went through like a Beatles phase or any of that stuff until, and I still never went through a Beatles phase, but mm-hmm. kind of getting to more experimental strains of rock music more recently mm-hmm. has been more of an influence on me than anything mm-hmm. else. Yeah, so, so <laughs> and, and what, uh, what interests you in the experimental rock area? There's a particular artists that have yeah, stood out well, for you? Yeah, there's one thing here I want to show you. Oh, I got a shirt on oh. here. <laughs> These guys are very influential. You'll have to, you'll have to move up a little. Oh, they can see. Magma. Yeah, yeah there we go. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I, I, love, I love Magma. I've seen them twice live now. They've come through the Bay Area recently. Uh, so they've, they've been a big influence on me. And right. actually, Christian Vander, the drummer in um, Magma, was very inspired by John Coltrane. I know nothing about, huh. I know nothing about his anti semitic I totally don't. Totally don't believe in that at all, but I've heard strains of that. But yeah. um, I'm way into their musical language, right. that they, the Zool kind of making up their own lyrics. So a lot of my lyrics are kind of made up in that in that way. Uh-huh. That's because it's it does something to the lyrics when you say, "Oh, baby, you know, you're really right. cool." It kind of makes it kind of stupid or something. Right. So I like it when the voice is used as an instrument in and of itself. You can't really tell what is the word they saying, but it sounds really beautiful. It's like almost like operatic or something, but it's right. you can't tell what words. It might, it's like a foreign language or something. Actually, you know. speaking of lyrics, you're, you're you're probably the only group this year that'll actually have a vocalist singing words. So, how, how is it? So, maybe <laughs> describe a little bit more about what you mean by that, because uh, what, poetry, or I mean, how how are you how are you developing your lyrics? Yeah, lyrics are are somewhat of an afterthought to me. Um, well, not not always. I mean, I, some people are very lyrically centered. I'm not. I'm more of like I'll write a chord progression and melody. I'll have some like rhythmic ideas and. And I had the sound of a, of a musical composition in mind. And then I'll be like, okay, I guess I need some lyrics here. <laughs> and at the last minute, I might just like write it, write it in, like kind of whatever's on my mind. Right. Or, or kind of like issues I think are important. So one tune we're going to be playing is called Rainbow, which oh, yeah. is about... I know that piece. Which is, <laughs> which is really about this, this, this cheesy game that I made up when I was working with these guys at Guitar Hero <laughs> called Bro Ball. <laughs> and it sounds super cheesy, and it is. It's like it's all about the different. Mo- they made up all these moves, and just on our lunch breaks, we were like playing with this. This they made up this game, sort of like hacky sack soccer. Uh, anyhow, it, but but the, the lyrics are all about that. They're, and it's nothing, not, not about anything else. Um, about the rules of the game, or yeah, no, no, yeah. And they're <laughs> and they're just really funny names. Yeah. And but it's also like a little bit deeper than that. It's almost like about creativity. How um, how it's almost like when. We're in our spare time just creating, making stuff up. We're actually far more creative than the, the video game we were making. We made up all these different rules and these names, and it's just it's just funny. I like how like how human creativity, when it's just not really focused or commodified, can come up with something even more interesting. You know, just kind of oh, what is this? I'm going to try this, and that's it's like almost like more of a creative spark than. So that's kind of the subtext of those lyrics and and other lyrics. You know. Um, I have a, another song we're going to be performing called Percunas, which is a, it's a big composition. It's like super polyphonic, almost like Baroque. Lots of, every person's like, has like seven pages of music they're reading down. Hmm. Um, and that's sort of about, uh, Lith- Lithuanian, because I'm kind of a Lithuanian background a little bit. It's about a Lithuanian, um, uh, is it Thor or who's the God of Thunder? Is it Zeus? Well, in Greek uh, mythology? it depends on whether, well, yeah, in, in Greek mythology, uh, Zeus, uh, uh, I believe, uh, had the thunderbolts. Okay, yeah, so it's like the Lithuanian version of that. It's called right. Perkunas, and it's sort of uh, about this, like, epic, um, kind of going back to my ancestral roots or whatever, right. how, whatever that means, um, yeah. which actually, I hate to admit it, but the experience, I went to a shaman with my, no, with my friend, yeah. and they're all of this ancestor stuff, and, like, yeah. I wasn't really aware of it. I'm like, oh, what is that all about? So I just kind of did a little bit of research on on that, but I know that you've gone back to your Finnish yes. roots a little bit, and that's like, but it's interesting when you tap into that, where, you know, like, you talk about how hard you work, <laughs> and I go, well, if you see the Finnish people, they work even harder, I'm like, wow, it was just interesting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's a lot of, if I ever get interviewed myself, there's a lot of revelations about that, but I, anyway, yeah, yeah, I digress, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, okay, so, 
So you've actually talked a little bit about what Inner Air Brigade is going to do at Summit this year, it sounds like. I, I noticed that your lineup is different from uh, the previous lineups. Was, yeah. there, was there a reason behind Yeah, honestly, I really I really wanted to participate in the Summit this year, but my uh, sax player, who, I, Ivor Holloway, uh -huh. amazing tenor sax player, uh, he runs a jazz camp, and he basically like oh. disappears for like a month and a half. And he's like, you know what, I can't do anything in the yeah. month of July. I'm like, right. man, I really want to play this gig, so... We're, we have some subs coming in. But actually, David Slusser, who's going to be on... Um, yeah, I noticed that. Reads and Electronics has played with us before. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a great fit. David's great. And uh, Josh Marshall is an amazing improviser okay. and a uh, great musician. So yeah. I'm filling in, filling out the sound a little bit for a bigger sound. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but usually we're, we're kind of... We have, we're usually a quintet these days. Mm -hmm. uh, so guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, and saxophone. And we've been with vocals. So I'm just trying to uh, pump it up a little bit and try some... Try some new things. You have a different vocalist too. I, I noticed from yeah. Uh, who, who's that? Allison Nibalski. Yeah. Yeah, she's a, a great musician. Really, really fun to hang out with. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be fun to kind of try a new configuration of musicians for this uh, special performance. Just change it up a little bit, do something right. new, and to come up with a, a a new premiere of a piece that I'm working on right now. Oh, okay. Almost done. <laughs> right. Okay. But it's uh, I'm experimenting. I'm experimenting with um, kind of like some some different tuning systems. I'll say I'll just say that about it. Where um, uh, I've kind of made up. I'm kind of experimenting with just. Not, it's not really just intonation. It's kind of like non-tempered mm -hmm. intonation, uh, and kind of like minimal kind of kraut rock type right. of textures. Right, so using a, a large swath of uh, style elements in combination with <clears throat> improvisation and uh, and um, complex rhythms and complex melodies, right? Yeah. So I was talking with Mark Clifford uh, the other day about what he's doing with Dirty Snacks, and it, it sounds that there's some some interesting uh, similarities in terms of approach between your two groups, even though you sound uh, somewhat different from each other in terms of uh, the overall effect. Um, and uh, we were talking about the aesthetic of accessibility in music, yeah, and in com combination with complexity, and oh, yeah. how and how a lot of those groups end up being still performing in the similar venues as the free improvising venues. Um, and I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that in terms of, um, you know, because of the past, uh, with like say someone like Frank Zappa, who was very complex and no, they're huge influence. stadiums, right? But but we're we're still we're still seeing even though there was a lot of influence, we're still seeing a lot of the groups in, involved in the more um, underground community still to this day and yeah. I'm wondering what your thoughts are about, about that yeah it's a, it's a really fine line like I talked about my experimental past but um, and I love that influence I like the exploration possibilities of, of that experimental music can, can um, bring to the table at the same time I like things to be a little bit accessible to be like be pleasing or like interesting or something new something different mm -hmm. uh, but also be grounded in some type of like technique or maybe a little bit of tradition the accessibility I, I think about that a little bit where it's like it should sound beautiful in a certain way um and like a lay person could kind of get something out of it they don't have to be kind of like you know a jazz musician to like understand what you're doing or like a trained composer that's the lay person kind of like oh i that's really interesting what you're doing i don't really know what it is but i like it so i like that accessibility i like kind of the i guess you would call a crossover potential of being like oh maybe you can do a more experimental uh, type of gig or you can play in the club we play most of our gigs in in, in clubs but i really like the festivals i really like right. the festivals i think that's a, a way to tap into i'm just a bigger production mm -hmm. it's more curated um but i've taken more uh time now in curating my shows like mm -hmm. we played with horse lords from baltimore recently mm -hmm. got hooked up with those guys and that was an amazing show and i also want to plug what's his name um Bob Ledoux of Danny Denny Breakfast. Right, so, right. He, he came up in our conversation with Mark as well. Yeah, I think Mark's played with him a little bit, but just like ha having a curated show is just really kind of cool. And um, and it's a lot of DIY, you know. I mean, that's right. all this creative stuff. Right. And I'm just realizing it's like, no one's going to do anything for you. You have to do it yourself. <laughs> and you right. you realize that. So <laughs> I like being in both, both camps. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think, where some really interesting stuff happens where you're kind of like, you have a little bit of like rock music or maybe jazz. You're mixing them together in your own way, um, yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The complexity of it is is interesting to me in terms of um, bringing in the compositional elements and then and then combining that with um, say like a story through through lyrics, yeah. for instance. Like sure. like that's what uh, that's what Bob Ledoux does with his his group. I 
I, it was amazing to see him um, do that as well. And I see that there's this there's this kind of like underground. Um, I hate to use the word like avant pop community, but there is. Oh yeah. Uh, there, it's just there's got to be some other terminology for that. Uh, but but uh, but it's interesting to me because there seemed to be much more of a resurgence in that late in the last few years. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know. I don't think it's even a conscious thing. I think that just people have all these influences of. Yeah. You know of that stuff. Another another person who's really interesting, like that, is like Dominique Leone, who was my roommate for three years right. and recently moved to New York. Mm-hmm. Really interesting cat that has all these influences, and and actually Mark Clifford played in his group. So there was, I, I don't know what it is. It's just I think you know the, the, there's just so much access to music that people just kind of take, absorb the music that inspired them and try to kind of make music. It just kind of comes out that way. Um, so. Yeah, and, and a lot of my influences has been like these, maybe like a magma strain with Oliver Messian, <laughs> with like Indian Carnotic music, mm-hmm. uh, with like kind of microtonal stuff. So it's like, what, the, what does that sound like? I want to hear that. <laughs> that's sort of like, right. that's sort of all these things that inspired me and I just kind of absorbed it and it kind of, it comes out in a, in a genuine way of like being really interested in that music. In, interested in, interested in that music. So it's not, I don't even think it's a conscious thing. It's just kind of like, oh, I really like, maybe I like a little bit of rock music and pop music and jazz, and it kind of comes out in a certain way. Mm-hmm. But that even that those general genre descriptors don't really no, right. do justice to what comes out. Right. Yeah, so. Exactly. But I like, I think it's great to be in both camps. Right. So um, <laughs> besides, there's a, you have a new piece you're going to be premiering. Yeah. Right? Are there any other other new pieces, or is there an overarching theme of your yeah. performance set? Um, <laughs> not not really. I think I'm just I just ch- it's it's interesting. Like I, there was a theme because I did think about this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Inner Ear Brigade. I'll probably tell us about the show. Inner Ear Brigade. My group has been in existence in one form or another mm-hmm. uh, at, for like about ten years now, yeah. and I chose pieces from every era. So I have one tune from my first EP that's also on my full length album called Knee. It's kind of about searching the universe for chocolate. So talk about themes, because I'm really into chocolate. So I wrote this thing about on a spaceship, searching for the cocoa bean, and methyl, methyl xan, things like the chemicals in chocolate. So those are my lyrics for that. So, so I did choose uh, pieces from the past, and then uh, Rainbow, which is on the, my last full length. And I have another album that's coming out, right. almost done, I swear, <laughs> that I'm playing a few cuts on that. And then very new stuff. So it's almost like a retrospective throughout the years of, yeah, of the group's existence of these pieces. And I'm like, oh, what, what do I want to bring to the table? I'm, you know, I'm just going to give them a wide, right. a wide range of pieces. So, so some of the pieces we haven't even played for so long that they're kind of fresh to us at least. Right. Um, so it sounds, like, it sounds like actually between you and Mark Clifford have actually developed a theme without even me thinking about it because you're both doing retrospective elements oh, that's in your cool. performances. And I, it sounds like you, neither of you talk to each other, so that's actually no, even more not fun. at all. So it's going to be a night of retrospective, experimental, uh, prog, uh, uh, crowd, uh, you know, just add all the words together. I'm, and when I heard Mark's play with us, I'm really inspired because he's that guy's top-notch. Trip, everything he does, mm-hmm. uh, amazing vibraphonist and yeah. great composer and... Those guys are just, I, I hope, are they before us? <laughs> I don't they, know. They, they are before you. Oh, them. no, yeah. no. They should, they should be after us, I feel like. Well. But, but hey, but that's great. <laughs> the, 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 the motion of the great mountain of the summit is, an, is, it, is already happening, so I'm afraid you can't change your mind. That, that's great. Yeah, e- either way, but I'm just delighted to be on the same bill with those guys. And yeah. also cats like Oliver Lake. I, is, yeah. he, is he coming through? Thursday night. Thursday night, yeah. okay. Uh, and just to plug the summit, um, when when does it start and when does it end? So I'm just going to start on the 24th of July of this year, and uh, in, at two o'clock with an improv workshop with Brandon Evans, who's visiting from Lawrence, Kansas, used to live here, uh, and it runs all the way through the 30th, uh, which will finish with Big City Orchestra. Oh, cool! The 1922 piece in Persian in the Persian market. Man. <laughs> and there's a lot in between, but I'm not even gonna go into it here. Yeah, no, uh, great. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, like Pete, just to be on the same like festival as Oliver Lake, I'm like super inspired. World World Saxophone Quartet. Yes. I've seen that cat a long, long time ago. When I used to live in New Mexico, and uh, just blew me away too. And he's uh, he's really part of the same community of independent uh, producers. He's just done it a lot longer than most of us. 
have, you know. So it's uh, so it's thematically across the board correct for the for the entire yeah. to have everybody who's involved is a self starter DIY creator of, of original music. Yeah. So well, thanks so much for coming and speaking with me. It's amazing. And yeah, I'm happy to be here. Happy to play the, the uh, summit. It's and we're uh, we're looking forward to your set in Air Brigade on yeah. July. 29th at the Community Music Center. And That's a Friday night. Friday night. Friday night, July 29th, 2016. That's correct. I just dated myself. This well, we need to do that because this will be up for a while. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks.